Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to discuss ICP waveforms. Let's first talk about how we actually place the EVD. If you remember from anatomy and phys, we have four ventricles total. We have two lateral or C-shaped ventricles. Those are your two large ones. Those then drain into the third ventricle and then finally into the fourth ventricle and then into the subarachnoid space. The lateral ventricles are nice and large and are C-shaped. For that reason, this is usually where we're going to place the EVD and the right lateral C-shaped ventricle about 5 to 6 centimeters in. Next, we'll discuss measuring. So we know we measure at the tragus of the ear, but really what we're measuring is the foramen of Monroe, which is at the junction between the third ventricle and the lateral ventricle. We obviously cannot see that because we don't have CT vision of the eyes, so we just use the tragus of the ear as our point of the foramen of Monroe. Next, let's talk about setup and management. Remember that the number that is set by the provider on the actual transducer or drain itself is the number that the ICP needs to reach in order to drain over. So what I mean by that is if you set the ICP to 20, ventricular system is only going to drain when ICP goes over 20. So for that reason, usually early on, we're going to have higher ICP numbers set because the autoregulation is lost within that brain until the swelling comes down. As these patients actually come off the EVD or we wean them from the EVD, we go down on our ICP levels, all the way down to 10, whatever you want to call it, to normal physiologic ICPs. This is the other way when you're transferring a patient to CT or maybe up to the unit and you're not able to transduce, you can simply make sure that the transducer is leveled at the tragus and look at the actual CSF, right? So if your ICP is set to 20 and your patient's draining, then you know his ICPs are 20 or above, right? If they're not draining, then you know his ICP level is not hitting 20. I don't give anyone medical advice to do this, but it's a quick little way to assess your patient if you're going on a trip and you don't have time to transduce your EVD. Lastly, let's look at some ICP waveforms. So when we're looking at ICP waveforms, the normal compliant ICP is a P1, P2, P3. And it looks like kind of like a step. It should be going down in a step-like manner. That's what we call a compliant brain. That's usually if I were to put an EVD in myself right now, I should see this nice step P1, P2, P3. A non-compliant, I say, looks kind of like a crown, where P2 is much higher than both P1 and P3. And that's more what we're going to see with our swelling. Lastly, we'll go through some of the bad ICP waveforms you don't want to see. So if you look at this graph, it's over a 15-minute period, and you can see the ICP gets all the way up to 60. A waves are the worst. A waves are awful. A waves, I say, are like kind of like the VTAC VFib, where you're getting these intermediate runs of VTAC VFib, and you're kind of looking at the monitor like, oh, I guess really hope this guy doesn't flip into VFib VTAC. It's these warning signs to warn you that this brain is very non-compliant. So with A waves, they look like shark fins. You get this huge increase in ICP, like all the way up to 60, and it takes a very long time for that brain to get back to normal ICP levels. So it's a huge, huge spike, and then also over time, the ICP stays very high. Next, we will look at B waves. I say B waves are bad. They're not as bad as A waves, but they're still bad. As you can see on your monitor, you're still having these very large spikes of ICP, way up, huge numbers, right? But it's coming down much faster. So they're not as bad as A waves, because if you remember with A waves, those shark fins, it's a prolonged period of ICP. We have a very high ICP over a very long period of time. Whereas B waves, we still have these huge spikes in our ICPs, but our time is much less. So we get an increased spike, but it comes down quickly. Lastly, let's look at C waves. C waves are crappy. They're not the worst of the bunch, but they're not great either. So C waves, you're still having these spikes of ICP, but they're not as huge, right? It's not like your patient's herniating right before your eyes. You're still having spikes, but they're coming down quick. So C waves are the worst. But the major thing with any of these ICP waveforms is be aware of them. If you see them, give a call to your neurologist or the neurosurgeon or your intensivist, whatever it might be. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a like, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.